Good evening, everyone, and welcome back. So tonight, I thought I would go through, for lack of a better word, my pyrotechnic mania over the last two weeks or so. I've been um, doing some tests that I've wanted to do for a long time, for instance. The other day, a package arrived on our doorstep. It was groceries that were packaged with dry ice. And so I saved this dry ice, and of course I did this uh, obvious demonstration with my children. I took um, a couple of pieces of it and put it in a bowl for them so that they could play in the mist and all that stuff and taught them about carbon dioxide and all that. But what I really wanted to do later on, which I did do in this video, is take some of that carbon dioxide and do the demonstration of burning magnesium metal between two blocks of carbon dioxide. So that'll be the first segment of this video. And I've written up all the formulas on the screen for all the reactions that will be going on during the video. Uh, the second part of the video, though, is going to be on flash powder. Um, I've been trying to devise a flash powder for use in DIY photography along that series um, so that I could have a full start to finish soup to nuts, you know, uh, nuts to butts, I don't know, f fucking sayings, um, process in order to like make uh, photographs from scratch. Um, so, you know, flash powder would be greatly uh, advantageous in that. Uh, so there were uh, three things that I tried. The first one was a basic uh, three-part mixture of aluminum, potassium nitrate, and sulfur. And the second was a four-part mixture, aluminum, potassium nitrate, sulfur, and carbon. And then the last test was a totally different formulation. It was a three-part mixture of potassium permanganate, aluminum, and sulfur. And the sulfur acts as a sensitizer in this last one because this one is more akin to thermite than it is to flash powder until you add the sensitizer. So let's get into the video. Here we have a nice shot of magnesium turnings and a flask with some carbon dioxide and bubbling away. Here I'm uh, taking a couple of these blocks and carving out a little channel in them so that I can put the magnesium uh, turnings in that channel and kind of trap them between the blocks. So I'm pouring it out onto the channel. Then I'm putting the other block on top and then lighting on fire, best part. And it goes pretty good this first time. Nice and bright, but we can do better. Here's what's left over. There's carbon and magnesium oxide. I'm doing the same thing again on a larger scale with the bigger block this time and a lot more magnesium turnings. In fact, all that was left in that particular beaker. And I added some more in between. Where are your gloves? And then I light the thing. Uh, yeah. Beautiful. Amazing. Fantastic. No complaints. Good stuff. Oh. And a little, uh, at the end. And here's that carbon. I'm kind of just cleaning it off a little bit. So I figured I'd do one last raw, make a big old pile of magnesium turnings inside of the cavities between those two and light it up and cover it. But my propane blowtorches had run out of fuel, so I used my giant burner from the actual main tank, which is not recommended, but was interesting. So I put the lid on, and it's important to note here that this entire reaction is coming from the magnesium and the carbon dioxide. It does get no air from the outside world in order to do that. And I find that kind of fascinating. You've got this, you know, fuel and oxidizer mix. Because in this case, carbon dioxide is acting as an oxidizer. Beautiful. Lights up the whole lab. This one's different. This one I tried the same thing with, with aluminum powder, and I put a small amount of magnesium on there to initiate the aluminum powder, figuring that it would probably require extra energy of activation in order to get over that threshold because magnesium has such a low activation energy compared to it. This one's buttered out. One. 
light. Ah, there we go. Back, damn it, back. Oh. And there's some funny commentary here in a second. took a real long time for that to die down. It was very interesting. It formed this lump under there, and it, at first glance I thought it was metal. Like maybe it just got really hot and centered the aluminum together, but when I looked at it closely it looked to be oxides of aluminum and carbon, just like I had expected. You flip it over onto the little plate there and I, I start smashing it up some and you can start seeing the carbon in it. Um, so yeah, that reaction works with aluminum, you just have to have a really hot initiator. I want to try doing this with other metals later on and see if they all do it to a certain extent. Um, here, well, not all of them. Here's a shot of oxygen being fed into some cotton balls. I've been wanting to do this demonstration for a while. I, I just happened to pick up the uh, oxygen tank when I got more propane tanks at the store so I could continue this video. There you go, look at that. Beautiful. Yeah, it really is a good idea not to smoke around um, oxygen tanks in use. It's also a good idea not to smoke. Smoking sucks. So here I am mixing up aluminum, potassium nitrate, more nitrate than aluminum, and sulfur. And I'm mixing it in this little thing here. It's a shaker from a drink mixer. Drink shaker. Then I take a sample and put a little magnesium wick in it. And then light her up. Not bad. Didn't explode. That's the point of the small tests. Now we go a little bigger. Beautiful. Oh, it broke the uh, tile. Yeah, that tile ends up in a lot of pieces later. Poor tile, poor safety tile. So now I'm adding carbon to the shaker. This is the second flash powder mix variation. Now I'm adding the potassium nitrate. The three other, the, the other components would make up gunpowder, essentially, if you left out the aluminum, which I'm adding here. And there's your sulfur. So basically this is flashy gunpowder which it, it behaves basically like flashy gunpowder. I think I put entirely too much sulfur in there though. Maybe not enough oxidizer. I get better at it as I go along. I did several of these tests. I think at this point I had added a little bit more oxidizer. Yeah, that seems right. And then I wanted to try a bigger test with a little bit more oxidizer. Now I have the proportions pretty good for 
what is essentially flashy gunpowder. That's what it looks like. Maybe a little slow burning. A really crappy black powder. You'd probably want to pelletize it and stuff first. Um, so I think at this point I just kind of like burn test a couple times and then just take what I'm comfortable with, a lot of it, and put it on the top there just to burn it all off because you can't really store it. I mean, you could, but it's highly flammable. I choose not to store it. So the thing broke, it fell into the pot that it was sitting on. And here's the very last of it. And I did this partially just to show how a fume hood can really keep up if it's working well. It was containing that smoke pretty well. I really couldn't smell much on the other side of that um, sash, even though it was definitely overwhelming the hood, contained it well. Now I'm mixing up the potassium permanganate uh, flash powder mix. This one uh, was about 60% permanganate, about 30% aluminum, and about 10% sulfur by the end of figuring it out. At first, I just add the 60-40 uh, mix um, of potassium permanganate and aluminum powder, and then once that doesn't burn properly, I, uh, I add the sulfur. As you can see, it was not sensitive to, uh, to heat. I held the lighter on it for a little while here and nothing happened really. And then took the blowtorch and I got on it and it started glowing red, so I'm like, okay, back away a little bit maybe, and it stopped. So I blasted it again, and it got real hot, and it did nothing. So then I'm like, okay, so maybe if I add some sulfur, it'll sensitize it, you know, sulfur sensitizes other pyrotechnic mixes sometimes, so maybe this will work. You know, being very careful, obviously. And there we go. Beautiful. That went off in under a second, I'm sure. Beautiful. So then I do uh, add sulfur to the rest of the mix um, before then testing it again, and I got this result. The proportions were better this time too because I didn't add an excess of sulfur. And here's the last test. Great. Well, thanks so much for watching. Uh, hopefully I'll have another video up for you soon. Um, the next one might be on phthalic uh, acid from naphthalene. It was another suggestion I got from um, a friend. I'll have to do more research on it first before I you know, commit to making a video, but that's what it could be on. Um, stay tuned uh, and I'll see you next time.